Hi everyone, it's Steve here at Barwell UK Airbrush Supplies. We've been sent in uh, by a customer saying that his Patriot Extreme is not working correctly or working at all and he cannot figure out why. So I thought it would be nice to have a look at it and uh, see what we can find. And this is the first time I've had a look at the airbrush. Uh, my first reaction is it is somewhat rather covered in paint inside the uh, paint cup right down and including the needle it is absolutely covered in paint and the tip of the uh, needle and everything is covered in paint and the uh, needle is not moving at all and it looks like the needle has been pulled well back so that's probably just a build up of paint um, and I'm hoping that you can see that the needle is absolutely caked up in paint I'm just going to try and zoom in a little and uh, as you can see there the needle is absolutely caked up um, So uh, we'll continue taking apart the uh, spray regulator will not come off the head the tip again is somewhat uh, caked in paint and so is into the end of the uh, airbrush here that's full of paint as well uh, so I think we can safely say the uh, airbrush needs a good soak a good clean and uh, try and get it done um, you may be able to notice here the discoloration of the airbrush and the same on the shell of the airbrush I'm assuming that the uh, customer is using a ultrasonic cleaner which is not the best idea for any airbrush so I will get this airbrush strip down to its shell and uh, give it a good soak and we'll continue once the airbrush has been soaked overnight. We've had this airbrush in soak for a few days now and there's a lot of paint that has come out of the uh, actual shell and the spray regulators and tips but if we take a closer look inside the um, cup you can still see there's an awful lot of paint still in there so what we'll do now because the paint's all softened down I'll connect a plug to our quick disconnect hose turn it on As you can probably see there's still some bits in there so we'll give this a good white round and uh, get as much out as possible 
and as you can see from the cloth which is just damp with some of the cleaner on it that there is and this is a problem that we come across very very often when people send the airbrush in to be serviced stroke get it back working it is always mucky and when I told the customer that this particular airbrush was still in soak because there was a lot of paint um, I don't think he's uh, quite believing me to how much is in the airbrush um, but there is an awful lot now just inside the head part of the airbrush there's still some bits of paint in there so I'll use a um, cotton wool bud stick now these are not the cheap type from the uh, pound shop where you can get a thousand for a pound these are a well-known brand because the cheaper ones the fibers break up so easily and uh, causes issues with leaving fibers in the airbrush now for a start I will use this just to get into the end and already you can see there's lumps coming out of the end of the airbrush so now I will get a needle that was bent some time back and got like a little hook on it and just gently I am not going in past any part of the airbrush I'm just gently working it away now there's a lot of controversy about these types of brushes because of the metal on them and that the thing is you cannot go past the halfway point in the colour cup uh, because if you go past that there's a chance you can damage the needle bearing um, but I do personally find these very good for getting debris out of the airbrush but I never ever go past the halfway mark on the colour cup at all uh, it isn't worth it for the damage it can cause now I shall just give this a final blow and then uh, I'll clean all the parts up in the same manner and check that everything is clear um, even on our quick disconnect there's lots of paint that came out when we blew it um, Now this is pretty well looking quite clean so now I will just get the parts cleaned down in the same sort of manner and check each part as we're doing And again, I'll just give it a quick little blow. And 
the same with the head. And the same with the tip. Now with the tip, I will always use a needle being very, very gentle, never ever using any force of any kinds. And again, just get a bit of tissue so we can hopefully see there are particles coming out of the head even though it's been soaked for a few days now and I will spend a little time just clearing this out and making sure there's no parts in there like there is just here these are all just coming out of the tip now. And I'll spend a little time off camera just going through this. And again, there is an awful lot that is coming out of there. But because it's been in soak, it has softened it up. So I'll just clean these bits out and check everything and in particular on, on the head um, there's six holes on this particular airbrush on the head. I'll check every one is perfectly clear and uh, then we'll uh, take another look. Having now checked through all the parts and cleaned them round. This is some of um, the uh, muck that we got out of uh, inside the uh, chamber uh, just past the colour cup and we did that with a uh, little uh, cocktail stick that I shaved down and uh, got as much out as I could and uh, we believe it is pretty well clear now. Um, and again, we've got plenty that uh, was coming out of the airbrush. So now I should get the airbrush all lubricated up and fitted back together and uh, have a check with it um, and uh, go from there. As we already have videos about lubricating the airbrush up, um, I will leave uh, the link in the description of how we do that um, lubricating with the uh, Badger needle juice um, in the description below so we can uh, cut the video timing down um, so you can watch that at a separate time should you wish to but as I've got it lubricated up we'll uh, then test the um, airbrush and uh, check it's all working. I've lubricated the airbrush all up now and fitted a quick disconnect plug so we can check it's all working and as you can probably see um, as always I like to give them a good lubrication with plenty of lubricate lubricant as in the uh, Badger needle juice and uh, we've had many questions about the needle juice that's in the airbrush after you've done it and uh, what do we do um, so it doesn't affect the paint. With the badger paints the needle juice definitely does not affect it at all um, but I will always suggest that once you've lubricated your airbrush up that you check first that everything seems to be working 
as in the needles moving and everything feels okay and looks okay and then when you use it blow it out and before you actually go painting with the airbrush use your um, paint brands recommended cleaner stroke thinner into the airbrush and always blow it through first to make sure that you've cleared out any lubricant that's in there and you'll find that everything will be fine and then again I will just double check it because I want to check that on some dry tissue that we're getting a nice pattern from the airbrush and it seems to be working okay and uh, that seems all okay and is all working I hope that's answered the question about once you've lubricated it up it is always suggested that you blow the airbrush out with your cleaner stroke thinner that the company of the brand of your paint recommends so the airbrush seems to be working all good now I will double check it again a little bit later on but I think we can call that one finished and get it back to the customer thank you for watching our videos please subscribe to the channel it does help it grow and so it's easier for more people to find the, uh, the channel and hopefully helps them with some of the issues they may have with their airbrushes. Again, thank you for watching.